Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I am going to be using the Snow Globe Shaker die. I showed you the pretty poinsettias, but I didn't end up using them. I did, however, use the Artsy Angel. And today we are going to be making something different than a card. We are going to be making a completely clear see-through ornament in a way that only I can do it, i.e., I messed it up and then showed you how I fixed it. <laughs> so here I'm using some uh, metallic gold um, paper, cardstock, <laughs> metallic gold cardstock, um, and I'm cutting out two of the outside frame. For the inside pieces, I am cutting out two pieces of acetate. I'm using Hero Arts, but feel free to use whatever you would like. I am also cutting out four of the frame pieces from just plain white cardstock so that I don't have to try to cut these thin pieces of foam to create my shaker. I'm going to use this cardstock as my buffer um, to create the difference between the panels. So here what I'm doing is I knew that I wanted there to be like snow at the bottom and I wasn't going to completely fill this sh shaker especially being as I was only going to have the width of those four sheets of cardstock so I am going to create like a little snow drift at the bottom and here I'm just doing it on regular white cardstock to kind of create a template you could do the snow and then cut it out with your dies um that would work as well. I didn't. I cut out my a template and then I'm just going to trace this onto some glitter paper. And because this ornament is completely clear, I want to be able to see the image from the front and the back. And so that is how I approached it. So I'm doing the snow drift in one orientation and then I am flipping the template over to get its mirror image and then I'm tracing that on the other end of the cardstock and then I will cut these out with my scissors. Again, you don't need to fussy cut them. You can use the die to do this. Um, you'll just need to cut one face down and one face up um, so that way you'll have the mirror image. And if you don't want to be able to, like, if you don't care about the back, like if it gets turned around, if people see um, the other side of your snow or your angel, then you only need to do one of these. Once I was done trimming them out, I went ahead, uh, went in with my eraser. Um, and just so we're clear, I, this didn't damage any of the glitter paper at all. And then I'm just checking to make sure that they line up and they do. And I was happy with the way that they looked. And then here I'm just checking it um, with my die to make sure that everything is fitting nicely and how I want it to look. And now I'm, was like I said, I showed you the pretty poinsettias in the beginning and I thought I was going to put them in there, but then I really just liked it with the angel. <laughs> just really simple um, with this pretty glittery angel. And so I decided to just stick with that. But you guys can put anything you want in here. You don't have to do the angel. You could do flowers. You could do pine cones. You could do a lot of things in your little snow globe. Our, um, the little, I think they're called winter wonderland dies. Like they have the little um, churches and houses. Those look adorable in this. Um, so here I am stamping my artsy angel and I'm stamping her in our intense black ink because it's safe for alcohol markers. And then I'm going to stamp her mirror image. Um, so I'm doing this using our, um, why can't I think of the word that I want? It's the, like the media mat. Um, and this takes a really great mirror image. I just did this very quickly, but I have a whole video, um, with our polar pails that goes more in depth on getting mirror images. But basically you just want to stamp straight down. I'm using that same intense black ink. I'm going to flip my cardstock over top of the image. I'm going to hold it firm with one hand and press with the other. And then I will hold it firm with that and flip it over. And here you can see you get a perfect mirror image. The image is not as dark. Um because we stamped the ink down and then picked it back up. So I do like to go in with a alcohol ink safe pen. Um, the one that I am using is really hard to get in stock, but you can use a Copic Multiliner or a uh, Micron uh, pen, and that would work as well. I Some people have asked what size liner I use. This is a 0.35 for this particular set. It's like a middle of the road. Um, and then here you can see them together two beautiful mirror images 
and now I'm going to color them. I did speed up the coloring a little bit because I wanted you to be able to see all of the construction, warts and all, of the construction of the shaker. Um, but again, I did, I have used this stamp before, which is um, like a more slowed down version of the coloring. The glitter of her dress, which is not included in that other video. I did another video on my personal channel quite some years ago, and honestly, I should probably do one again. Um, but because I knew that I wasn't going to be putting a lot of bulk in my shaker since I was just gonna, like I said, just have that little bit, um, built up in between. It wasn't going to be like two layers of foam tape like you would normally see with a shaker. Um, I wanted to make her nice and glittery too with my coloring. So I started out with my skin tone and then I'm moving into the hair this I tried to leave pretty neutral. This is really a kind of monochromatic ornament. Um, lots of gold and white. Uh, but I think she came out super pretty. Somebody had in that video, actually in that same mirror image video, um, with the polar bear, um, I had asked you guys what you wanted to see more of. And um, while there was not a lot of requests for it, there was a handful that were like, maybe try something besides cards. Um, I will tell you that I really like the way that this ornament turned out and I have no issue whatsoever hanging her on my tree. And actually at the end of the video, um, you know, cause we always, you know, you see the, the video or the photographs that we take of our cards so that you have a nice still shot in the beginning and the end so you can see what we're making. Um, but at the end, after the final still shot, I took one of her hanging on my tree so you could see that one kind of how she is in her natural habitat. Uh, as far as the wings go, I wanted them to be white, but not like blah white. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do all of the shading with a cool gray family. Um, I chose the cool grays because that's my preferred, but you can use any grays that you have. Warm grays, toner grays, neutral grays, whatever you got. Um, but just remember when you're coloring white, you're only adding in the shadows. So I am following the lines that the illustrator gave me and I'm keeping everything super, super tight. I'm just doing, um, little lines you know, sometimes extending past out the black lines that are drawn, but I'm leaving a ton of white in there because I want her wings to look white. I just don't want them to be a flat white. Then once I get through all of the gray, I'm going to go in and add some blue because it's a really nice complement to gold. Also, it's my boyfriend. Blue is my boyfriend. <laughs> I love blue. Um, but I do think that it is a very nice complement to the gold. And it's not like overtly blue. It's not in your face. But it just gives it a little bit of a different um, tint to the wings than just plain gray. And you can see from the blues that I chose, it's like a blue quadruple zero, a double zero, and an O2. They're not really dark. Like they're just not. They're, they're, um, definitely on the paler side. Um, and I am not extending them out except for that B quadruple zero. That one I will go in and extend out a little bit more, but for everything else, all the other blues, I'm just going right over the grays that are already there. I hope that makes sense. Um, so... Yeah, so you guys asked <laughs> asked for the ornament, and like I said, I think she's beautiful on the tree. I have no issue um, with how she turned out at the end. However, I do not foresee myself making another one of these in the future. Maybe because I, I think maybe I got overambitious, I think is what happened. And honestly, like I was going to try to put lights in this. I was going to try to put lights behind her head. If I could have found my little press lights, I would have. But I searched all over my craft room and I couldn't find them. And it was in the middle of the night when I was making this. So it was too late to call my sister and be like, hey, where'd you put my lights when we clean the craft room? <laughs> but I do think she'd look super cool with lights. Um, so this is my yellow combination. If you are a avid watcher, you may notice that normally my... Um, mid-tone yellow is a Y08 and this time I used a Y19. 
just going to be real with y'all. They're basically the same color and I didn't want to refill my marker. So I just picked the Y19. But if you own a Y19, you don't need an 08. And if you own a 08, you don't need a 19. I purchased both of them before I purchased the hex chart. Um, and if you're not familiar, Google Sandy Ulnax hex chart. It's brilliant. She took so much time putting it together and it's by actual color instead of number so you can see how close they are together and i promise you this 19 and this 08 are almost identical you do not need both of them unless you have full set syndrome then no judgment on my part i totally get that um so going through and adding the shadows to the angel i am coloring her just like i normally would in the beginning to get all of my shadows laid down correctly get good blending and color saturation before i go in and do the technique to make her look glittery so you know her hands are in front of her chest so her chest is going to be darker um the part of her arm that is behind uh, the arms crossed in front will be darker. She has this drape of fabric over top. Um, so that will have more of a highlight where the underneath, um, like the underlay of her dress will be darker. And then down at the bottom, there's two lines that are already drawn in to give her dress kind of like a flowy look. And all I did was accent those with some shadows. And then on the in-between, I drew like a little bit of a triangle again just to give it a little bit more shape and movement um so any point where two things meet any point where one object lays on top of each other that's where you want to like add your shadows in um and the one just right up like on that top piece of fabric you can see that i added my own shading there and that was again just to give it a little bit more movement um, if you left those off, it would not be disastrous. It would totally be okay. Uh, and now I like to go lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. I'm moving back out, um, to my lightest color at this point. So I'm filling in more and more of that dress. Um, and again, if you, like, if you're happy with the way it looks at this point, then just stop. This is... There, there's many things that I have colored exactly the same way, and this is where I would stop. I've, I've used my blend. I've got good movement. I'm, I'm happy with the shading. But because I wanted her to be extra, that is why I did the glittering dress. Um, just to give her, because she's in her, she's by herself in the snow globe. She is my focal point, so I wanted her to be super fancy. How am I going to get that glitter? I'm going to use stippling. And so I'm going to go in with my darkest color. And do the stippling in the darkest areas and then the next color i will stipple over the stippling by the way is just a series of small dots um i will go over my darkest stippling and then extend it out and i will do that for every consecutive color so when i move on to that y19 i will go over the e99 the y24 and then extend it out with the y19 the reason that that is important, especially with this technique, is because to Copics are transparent, which means lighter colors will lift darker colors. And so by continually going over these dots with multiple colors, you are lifting some ink in some areas and it's going to give you a multitude of values. So it's going to slightly change the colors and make them a little bit lighter. And this will help that glittering effect that we're going for. The icing on top of the glittering dress cake, if you will, is the last step. So this looks pretty cool and you can tell that there's something going on. It's a little, you know, multifaceted and all that jazz. But the the last step of the glittering is the most important part and it brings the whole thing together. And that, my friends, is a white gel pen. I know that people have, there's a bunch on the market I am a ride or die jelly roll. I have been since high school. I've never really wavered from that. When I got into card making, I tried a couple of other ones and 
they none of them ever just compared. So mine is a 10 point, which is a medium. So the dot can be much bigger, but I go in with a very light hand when I'm doing this particular technique. And you're just going to put these white dots all over everything. And if you can see beyond my hand, you can start to see how this thing already looks like it's shining in the light like glitter. And she's a stunner, folks. She's beautiful. She totally looks like this glittery angel, which is the whole point. Um, and you could even further this by putting actual glitter on it, by doing like a series of dots of stickles, um, or if you have a clear glitter pen, if you're going to do the clear glitter pen, I would recommend doing it before the white gel pen. That's just me. But here you can see she's beautiful. She's all glittery. I wanted to show you the difference. And so when I colored the other one, I stopped. And so here you can see the one on the right has no glitter. We colored it the same way. And the one on the left glittered up. She's totally gorgeous. So now back to the construction, I'm going to cut both of these out with the dies. In order to cut out my mirror image, I'm going to put the die on the back. I'm going to line it up through with the light um, to make sure that it cuts out accordingly. And then that way I will be able to line them up and she will be the same on the back and on the front, which is really the whole point in my clear shaker. Um... Oh, here. Yeah. So I decided that part of the way through that I wanted like a little wooden base for my snow globe. And I'm going to be honest with you, Honeybee has barn planks that would have been a way easier fit. These worked fine. Um, this is the wood frame builder. These work totally fine. Um, but the barn planks would have meant I only had to cut one, but I couldn't find them. Like I said, it was the middle of the night. So I opted to do these and then just glue them to cover my base piece and I just used craft cardstock as a base. Went in with two different colors of Distress Ink um, just to add a little bit of warmth and shading to them and I was happy with the way these came out. It was such a... I'm doing this voiceover at 10.30 at night. I've been up since 7 o'clock this morning just going, going, going. I will get more in-depth into story time in another video. <laughs> in another video, I think. I don't know if we'll have time for the whole big thing today. I'm just going to give you the rundown of what I did. So I got up at 7 o'clock and I had agreed to um, do Shop with a Cop. So normally I do... I, I will just briefly tell you, normally I have been doing Shop with a Cop as a dispatcher since I started, since the very first year that I worked there. Um, and some years ago, my chief was like, hey, we're doing this thing. They don't have anything for the kids. Can you do something? And I was like, I could probably paint some faces. Now, fast forward to here we are. And so one of the chief's secretaries from another department remembered that I did face painting at this particular um, activity, this shop with a cop uh, pre-COVID. And so she sent me a message and was like, hey, can you do face painting for the kids at shop with a cop? And I was like, yeah, sure. I totally can. Um, and so, oh, here. So now that's all trimmed out. I was happy with the way that it looked. I, You don't have to put a sentiment on it, but I thought that it looked more put together with like a little title. I think we talked about this recently in another snow globe card I did. Like every snow globe I've ever seen has like a little title for its scene. And so I thought she need I thought she needed one to finish her off nicely. So from that same artsy angel set, I picked the Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Um... And I am stamping that on black cardstock in our brilliant white pigment ink. And then I am going to heat emboss it with a white detail pigment ink and cut it out with it. its companion dye. So anyway, so I had shop with a cop this morning and I had to be there by 830. So my husband very generously um, solo parented this morning so I could go do this. But then Peanut had a basketball game. We're back to basketball. It's that time of year. So I went into Shop with the Cop. Directly from Shop with the Cop, I went to Peanuts basketball game. Um, they were running late by quite a bit. And so, wait, we have to go back to the card. So now here's all my pieces parts cut out. And I'm going to start building this. I'm using the the thin tape from Honeybee. Um, they come in all different sizes, but the one I have is a quarter of an inch. And... So this is a 
do as I say, not do as I do. So originally when I started doing this, I was just like doing them in little pieces around the round part. That's the way to do it. You want to do small pieces where you're not pulling on the cardstock. Because this die is cut with thinner edges, it's really easy to warp it by pulling on it. Um, like with your adhesive, not just by pulling on it with your hand, but like with your adhesive. And so I think that was where I started to go wrong is I was pulling it as I was laying down the adhesive and it didn't line up perfectly, but I'm pretty sure that was my own doing because I have used this shaker before with the pretty poinsettias, in fact, and I did not have that issue. Um, and then I used that, I think I did it with foam that time. So anyway, I'm adhering both of these gold frames to their acetate pieces. So one gold frame on one acetate piece, one gold frame on another acetate piece. And then um, I am going to put in my snow drift. So again, one on each side, like the back and the front. Let's call them the back and the front. I think that makes more sense. So I'm going to put one snow piece down here. I'm going to lay it in place, make sure that everything lines up on the flip side. And then I will put the other piece on the second one after I line it up. So I lined it up with its the back of the ornament and then I adhered my frame into place um, over the snow. So there's still two pieces. They're not glued together yet. Just wanted to make sure my snow was lining up. So then from here, we're going to start adhering those white pieces. Can you hear my dog just heavy, like just heavy snotting as she's coming up into this room? I have to leave the door. Normally I kick my dogs out, but um, I have to leave the door open because Caitlin is sleeping. Uh, and so I need to be able to hear her if she starts crying and I need to stop my voiceover. So she just comes slobbering in and then slobbering out. So for the angel, I glued her together, but I didn't glue the bottom because I need to slide it over the snow as I'm showing you here. So that way she's in front of both snow banks from the back and the front. So... Now I'm going to go and I'm going to put in these white pieces. But for the first one, I already have the snowbank down and the snowbank doesn't go all the way up. So I'm just going to hold it in place and clip the um, frame. I just need the top piece. So I'm going to put that in place so that now everything is level. So I have my glitter snow drift and then the next white piece so everything's level. Like I said, the reason that I probably won't do this again is because I am not, I don't want to, like, clearly I got the job done, but I'm not, like, an expert in shakers or ornaments or home decor by any means. I'm merely sharing with you my experience. Um... And so maybe you are more proficient in it, which I hope you are, <laughs> truly. Um, but I think that I made it more complicated than it needed to be. And I can admit that, you know, because it's my first time doing it. So I think I did make it more complicated. So anyway, once I got that first piece down, then I could stack them up and have no issue. Now I can adhere my angel and I'm only going to put her on one side at this point. Um, so I slid her in behind the snow so that she's in, in front of the snow bake at the front of my shaker. And now I'm going to fill it. So I use some of this Earth Safe Glitter. This is from Hero Arts. And the one that I chose to use is just called Iridescent. It's just like a white glitter. Um, and then I'm going to use some of the small, they're just white. Um, I think they're the four millimeter white um, sequins. And then I use some bigger ones. And I think the bigger ones are a little bit of a mistake. Also, I think the amount of glitter I put in was a little bit of a mistake. Because remember, I knew I didn't have a lot of real estate. I didn't have a lot of gappage in between um, because I wasn't using the big, thick rolls of, of foam. Here is my huge mistake. I use liquid adhesive. Why did I do that? Honestly, I think I just like defaulted back to what I know and I like a liquid adhesive. Um, don't use that. Use the tape. Because here in about five seconds, now I'm sliding my snow bake up underneath my angel because that part isn't glued. And then I'm going to put my 
frame in place. Now this is my, my top frame. Um, and then I'm going to adhere that down and then I'm going to shake it around and then you know what's going to happen. It's going to fall apart. <laughs> True story in five, four, three, two, one. My glitter is falling out on to my work surface and I don't, I do not realize it yet here. I realize it right now. I was like, oh, there's a gap. Oh, everything's falling out. Oh no. As Caitlin would say, uh oh. <laughs> so I went ahead and removed my top frame and I can see that the glitter is way down where it's not supposed to be. I wanted to show you that you can save it with the items you've put in there. So I just took a clean dry paintbrush and I just scooped everything back to where it needed to go. But you can see this glitter is like way down where it does not need to be. And so I scooped it back all to the center. I ultimately ended up just starting over. Just, I, I'm just being transparent. So I just dumped that stuff out. And then I went in, I used some low tack tape to pick up as much glitter as I could from the areas in which I will be putting adhesive. So I'm just kind of sticking it all over to pick up that glitter so that the next time I go in with my adhesive, there's not going to be any issues about it sticking because the free like powder glitter is in the way. Um, and then I did the other side as well. I don't know if I left that part in there, but I did do the other side also. I got a new piece of tape and then went in um, and cleaned up all my extra glitters. Now I did the tape this time. I refilled it with my little shaker bits and then I put it on top. And this time it did hold. <laughs> this time it did hold. So yeah, don't use the liquid adhesive. Don't do it. Um, also something I learned is I should have hole punched way earlier in my process. Um, I should have hole punched my pieces before I got started because my hole punch was a smaller one since it's such a, uh, dainty frame around the snow globe and I wanted to be able to put my string through. So I did them all at one time and I did manage to get it done. I'm not going to pretend like I didn't, but it didn't need to be this hard. So learn from my lesson, hole punch as you go. Um, so I finally got that punched out and then I just used some gold thread. I already have this. I have a gold, a silver, and an iridescent um, that I think I just picked up at like Joann's or something. It's just a little metallic thread. I mean, that's all it is, is metallic thread. So when because I did all of this and I had to pull it off and put it back on, the metallic cardstock got a little like wonky, got a little dented, got a little funky. Um, and so I wasn't going to take the whole thing apart again. I decided just to just cover it up. I'm going to mask it. Um, so I cut two more gold frames and that's what I'm doing here is I'm lining this up so I can get the hole in the correct place to hang the thread by it. And then I'm just going to cover it up. So... I mean, that just sometimes happens with metallic cardstock, you know, because it is a little bit more sensitive to impressions and things like that. So this I felt comfortable gluing with liquid adhesive because it was just paper on paper. Like, so that totally worked out fine. And then I threaded my gold thread through it. Um... So anyway, oh, so Peanut had his basketball game. So I went directly from painting faces to the basketball game. Caitlin was napping at the time of the basketball game. So my mom came over so Eric could come up to the game. And then we came home, changed clothes, took Caitlin to my parents' house. And then he and I went shopping for the kids for Christmas. Then... I came, like, we went to my parents, we picked up Caitlin, I came home, and he had to go into work because he's on call this week. Um, so it's just been a very long day. So it's almost 11 o'clock now, and I'm like, wah, wah, like, I'm just, I'm done for, I'm done for the day today. It's just been a long one. Um, so thankfully, tomorrow will not be as busy. Speaking of tomorrow, um, before I forget to mention, uh, I am doing a, um, a, a live over on the Hero Arts channel. 
So I will put that in the community page if you want to check that out. But anyway, so here now I've glued down my wooden base. Now I'm going to put my little title of my snow globe on um, and then that will finish her off. So something totally different for me. I hope that you made it through and were a little bit inspired. I know that it's rough to watch somebody do something that maybe they're struggling to figure out. Um, but it was fun and it was a learning experience. And now I have this beautiful ornament. And there was a couple of techniques in there for you to kind of check out and try. Um, and so I hope it inspires you maybe to to maybe go outside of your box, even if it is a little bit more challenging. Um, there's There's benefits to working outside of what you're used to. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.